it's a great honor to have the Million Dollar Hotel be the, the opening of this 50th Berlin Film Festival. been hanging out in downtown LA. I dared Edge to jump across from one side of the building to the other. And from there began this idea, of a story about a leap of faith. Vim had made this movie, Paris, Texas, which very much influenced uh, an album of ours called The Joshua Tree. I'd like to think that in some way, The Million Dollar Hotel is a, is a hangover from both of those projects. <laughs> It's nice to get out of the first person. It's nice to disappear into other characters. It's fantastic, it's fantastic. It's <laughs> got a 365 pound gorilla, Mel Gibson, um, to act as bodyguard. We've got um, this extraordinary man, Finn Vanders, to direct it. We made the film together, the three of us. And it was a joy, I have to say. What's exactly. your name? Stefan. And who am I? Born all good. <laughs> <laughs> Stole my love away. There's three stories in the Million Dollar Hotel. There's a murder mystery, there's an, an art scam, and there's a love story. What does it mean to you being one of the biggest rock stars in the world? I live in a city where being a big rock star is not seen as particularly as a plus. <laughs> what do we do this morning? 32. I mean, it's succinct tablet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Day's work. Really These movie black. stars are they're lightweights. Doing the music for the Million Dollar Hotel was was a very fun experience. We set up the the movie and played uh, live to what we saw on the screen. Just assembled an extraordinary cast of musicians with Hal Wilner producing, Brian Eno, Daniel Lanois, and this genius trumpeter, John Hassel. His music perfumes the whole of the hotel. It's like a jazz kind of a soundtrack. And the Million Dollar Hotel actually exists in downtown LA, it's still operational. the million dollar hotel to break people's hearts. Now, can you please tell us where did your ideas for the story first start? The million dollar hotel exists, you know, it's, and it's still operational in downtown LA. I visited there in the late 80s and couldn't quite believe my eyes. Just in every room there was a story. Uh, all these characters um, um, living in downtown LA in this, you know, kind of halfway house hotel, you know, cheap accommodation. All kinds of characters. Good people, bad people, pimps, hookers, um, mothers with lots of children, and outpatients from mental hospitals that Ronald Reagan had closed down in some health cuts. I was just looking at it and thinking, this is in the middle of Los Angeles. This hotel with its, you know, sea of marble um, was in the 30s in the golden era of Hollywood. It was, you know, it was the palace. And here it is now. And I, I just, I just, that's where I became interested in it. And now, what, what exactly was it about the hotel that inspired you to write this story about it? I guess it's a, for me, it was unfinished work. In the 80s, we had, you know, we'd, we'd come, we were dealing, you know, we were interested in America as a subject. We'd, we'd, we'd recorded the Joshua Tree and Rattlin' Home. Vim Benders, curiously, had, had done Paris, Texas, dealing with the same subject. In a way, this is like a hangover of both of those projects. Um, I just thought it was a great metaphor for the other side of America, the side that we don't normally see. 
and, and also an interesting context for a love story. Because in the end, though it starts out as a murder mystery and becomes an art scam kind of a movie, finally it is the love story that you're left with. And this beautiful, beautiful love story. How did Wim Wenders become involved in all this? Well, I mean, it, it, it is an arrogance to think that, you know, you can write a script and a, and a story. I had to, I needed help. Um, Nicholas Klein is, is a guy I bumped into at a party. I got him to help me with it. He wrote the screenplay. Um, and, and for a director, um, I couldn't think of a better director to shoot America. Um, than Vin Vendors. He's a particular way of, you know, I am America, I'm Americana. And, and also it was a dysfunctional love story. I thought it was, and his, in the end, it, that's his subject, really, you know. Um, so it just it was what lucky, I guess people call it convergence. It all just came together for us. And um, how lucky is that? You know, your first story and Vin Vendors is directed. Can you tell us how involved you were in the soundtrack of this film? Well, Vin, Vin takes music really seriously. I, I, I think, he, I think he seems. To, I mean, he listens to more music than not just films. I think, and I insist, it's always been a fan. It's always been a big part of what he does. <clears throat> so he wanted to be involved, and he came over when we were making the soundtrack, and he sat in the room and, you know, contributed. Didn't exactly play the tin whistle, but, you know, he was. He was he was just into it. We, we we the soundtrack was a was a lot of fun to do because we, we improvised a picture live. We played the movie and we play live. Assembled this great band, this genius trumpet player called John Hassel, and we just uh, it's like a jazz kind of a soundtrack. Um, with and then there's a couple of U2 songs um, at that bookend the movie. Now, what was it like recording the soundtrack while playing live to the film? We had these giant tellies that we'd put around the studio and we'd, we'd watch and play live. So the orchestra was, was made up of these great players, Brian Eno, Daniel Lanois, Bill Frizzell, um, Greg Cott, this incredible drummer called Brian Blades. I mean, for me, this was wild, because I'm a punk band, you know? And, in the room with all these musicians and they, they were, it was it, it was great actually and Larry and Adam came down occasionally and beefed up the things because they can't rock these players like you know what I mean jazz people they don't you know at one point it was we need a really heavy thing and they, they, they don't know how to do that you know um, so yeah Vim is really pleased with the soundtrack and 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 so am I has this fulfilled a dream to you? I got interested in this because I was tired writing in the first person, you know. I wanted a holiday for myself, to be honest with you. I just, I don't, in you two and ever, we don't really do story songs. So, I mean, I usually write from a single you know, point of view. So, it's just nice, nice to disappear into other characters. That was a thrill. And, um, I mean, there's two ways you can do it. You can act tried to get me to act in it a few times, but I chickened out. Um, Julian Sands plays the part I was most interested in. In fact, he's wearing my glasses. He, it's, 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 that's one of my favorite scenes. Um, Julian Sands is really brilliant. So you can act or you can write, they're the ways. Um, on this one, I wanted to write, produce. I learned a lot about how movies are put together. And, you know, I'm just a nosy, curious kind of a person. I just want to always know what's going on. Now, do you have any further future film ambitions? And if you do, can you please tell us what they are? Yeah, I got another story started. Um, it's called Show Band. Um, but right now, I just want to be in a band. I just want to make music. I want to be in the best band. And uh, I like my day job. Well, thank you very, very much. I've come crawling, falling at your feet. This is the music factory